Hey, coach. How are you? All right, we've got LSU coach Ed Orgeron with us. He's going to open with a, a quick statement, and then we'll uh, open the floor to a question and answer. Hey, guys, great to see everybody. Obviously, we're excited for the start of fall camp. Our team has had an outstanding summer. Player practices has been great. Uh, attendance and meetings, uh, one hour on Monday and one hour on Wednesday on installation has been fantastic. Our guys are working hard in the weight room. Our freshmen look good. We have our whole team together starting practice on August 4th. It's going to be an exciting year. Thanks, Coach. And if you'll raise your hand, we'll get a microphone to you for Q&A. We'll start right over here on the left. Second row. Good afternoon, Coach. Coach, what's your vision vision for the offense and the person selected to play the quarterback position? Yes, uh, our vision for the offense is to have a, an offense which fits the quarterback skills. Uh, we're very multiple in the things that we can do. If the quarterback skills say that he's a runner, we have quarterback runs in our offense. If he's a drop back thrower, we can do that. It all depends on the type of quarterback that we have. Uh, obviously, we have several quarterbacks that are dual threat quarterbacks. We have one quarterback that's a pro style quarterback, and we haven't found out what Joe can do yet, but we do believe that he is a dual threat, can do both. But we're going to see in camp. Obviously, we have some base plays that we're going to run regardless who the quarterback is, and then we're going to tailor some plays to the skills of the quarterback. Uh, we want our quarterback, our offense to be 50-50. I want the quarterback to be a leader and a playmaker and a decision maker and lead this football team. We'll go right down here on the front row, left side. Uh, when you think back to, to much earlier in your career, how would you describe the challenge of being just a first-time head coach? Yeah, everything's new. Everything is new. Every day is new. Now I can rely on experiences. I can rely, make decisions on, you know, this work. I, I, I faced this before, I want to do it this way, I don't want to do it that way. As you get older and more mature, you tend to lean on your mentors a little bit more. You know who the right mentors are to lean on. I have some mentors that I believe in. So I think that's a combination of all those things. What is it you would track on and, and, and that you would do differently if you had it to do over again the very first year? Oh, there's a bunch. <laughs> there's a bunch, you know. And choosing a staff. I think I'd take my time in choosing a staff and make sure that uh, they're the right guys. They're the right guys that fit and they're able to do the things that we want to do on the same page. I'll go right back here on the back row on the right side. Hi, Coach. So I read this article that said SEC Media Days this year is a little bit different because there aren't really that many household names, no really big names that people hear a lot. So what would you say about your guys, even though they may not be household names yet, what would you say about them? We're very proud of our guys. And uh, we feel that uh, Rashard Lawrence, Devin White is – Probably the best, if not one of the best linebackers in America. Foster Morrow is an outstanding leader for us. So we very are proud of our guys at LSU. If they're not household names, they may become household names this year. Coach, um, talk about Joe Burrow and what you've learned about him since his transfer that you like and what uh, Coach Ensminger brings to the quarterback table that perhaps yeah. we haven't seen at LSU prior. Joe loves football. Uh, he's in the office studying film on his own. He's very smart. He's very determined. He's in great shape. I watch him run. He's competing to be the first on all sprints. He's not, on, he's not first on all sprints. He's a competitor. He's quiet. Uh, he's working hard to earn the respect of his football team by doing the right things. Steve Ensminger is a great game day caller. He's a tiger. He has a lot of experience. Uh, Steve and I are on the same page. We when I hired him, we came up with a blueprint. He and I were on the same page with that blueprint. Obviously, there's going to be some changes according to what our skills are, our different players, but we want to throw the football. Or we want to be 50-50. Uh, Steve is an experienced football coach and a guy I trust. And also, uh, like I said in there, Steve's a great recruiter. He's done a good job of recruiting our football team. We'll go right here in the middle on the left side. Coach, what's your thoughts of opening up on a Sunday night on national TV against a good Miami team? What a, what a, what a great opportunity. You know, uh, Dallas, Texas, Cowboys Stadium. Uh, Texas is a big recruiting area for us. Is where we got Jamal Adams. We've got several of our players uh, on our football team from that area. I uh, have a lot of respect for Coach Rick. 
He's done a tremendous job. He's brought the U back. Uh, I coached at the University of Miami for for four years. I know exactly what that temperament is down there, the type of football players they have. It's going to be a tremendous challenge. Like I said, you know, you start all season workouts and you open up with Miami. Everybody walks in with their chest up, their eyes up, and they're ready to go. We'll go to the camera platform on the left side back here. Over here, Coach. We asked Foster about just um, how important it is to keep LSU, Louisiana talent at LSU, mm -hmm. and he really said that you know we carry LSU wherever we go, and we carry Louisiana wherever we go. How important is it to you to just keep Louisiana recruits and LSU talent at LSU? It's the first step. It's the basis of all our recruiting. Here's our philosophy. To recruit the best players in the state of Louisiana, to keep them home at LSU and play for the Tigers go out of state and recruit potential number one draft picks like we have done so many years. This is a great year in the state of Louisiana. We have a strong recruiting class right now. We have a couple of guys to close on. We have some commitments that are recruiting for us at LSU. That makes it very powerful. But I do know this, the uh, battles have just begun and uh, they're gonna be all the way down to the stretch and we're going to be prepared to keep our guys in state. We'll go to the cam camera platform far right back. As someone who played uh, defensive tackle in college, you know, uh, what does it take to make a great defensive tackle, and do you think Rashard has exhibited uh, I think the tenacity, explosiveness out of your hips, change of direction, great hand strength, smart, relentless. He has all those intangible plus. Rashard's a great student. Rashard's a 3.8 grade point average uh, student. He can read sets. He can make communication on the line of scrimmage. And he's a tireless worker. We'll stay on the camera platform right in the middle, all the way hey, in the coach. back. Uh, you guys haven't beaten Alabama since 2011. You get them at home this season. Just when that time comes on the schedule, what are you preparing for the defending national champs? Obviously a very good football team. Coach well by Coach Saban. Uh, they've had the number one recruiting class of the many years ago, but you know what? We've had some battle with them now. Close is not good enough. I take it back uh, two years ago. We're going 0-0 into the fourth quarter. Give, give them the credit. They made plays we didn't. Last year was a physical ball game. We, held, we hung in there toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. They made the plays and we didn't. Uh, we understand, I understand, that being the head coach at LSU, you have to beat Alabama. That's the benchmark. Go over here to the front row, all the way to the left. Just given how much production y'all lost on offense, do you think, especially early on against Miami and then those next two uh, conference games in September, that the defense is going to have to kind of step up and carry y'all? You know, um, that would be uh, some uh, logical thinking, but we cannot think that way. We have to be full speed. We have to go against a very good Miami defense, a very good Miami offense that scores points. We need, we need to be clicking on all cylinders the first game. Then we play Southeast Louisiana, then we play Auburn. So we have to start fast. We have to get this team ready on all three phases of our team. Now, whether we can do that or not, that remains to be seen, but that's our goal. Go to the front row over here on the right. Coach, how important is it to have assistance that you are totally comfortable with? And with that in mind, will you delegate the offense to Steve or how much input will you have in the plan every week? First of all, I totally trust Steve. I totally trust Jerry Sullivan. I've worked with uh, Tommy Robinson and James before, and I totally trust Mickey. So those, these guys, I have no problem walking in there and saying, hey man, what are we doing here? This needs to be fixed. And I'm sure they have no problem saying, yes sir, you're right. So I think that we're on the same page as that. But as far as me being in there on a daily basis, I'm not going to do that. I choose to spend most of my time on defense and on special teams. But if I do see something that I think is wrong, I have complete authority to go in there and say, hey, what are we doing? We need to fix this. And they're going to say, yes, sir, you're right. That's how we work. We'll go to the camera platform all the way in the back on the left. Hey, Coach, is the quarterbacking job completely wide open? How do you get four guys reps? <laughs> and if it was up to you, when would you start to have separation, yeah. whether you tell us or not? Yeah. Well, here's uh, – is it easy to get four guys reps? No. Okay. We would have liked to have a starting quarterback by the end of spring. It didn't work that way. Uh, no one has earned a starting quarterback position at LSU. There's been some inconsistencies. There's been some great days. 
uh, now you add Joe Burrows to the mix. So what we're going to do, we're going to have split practices. We're going to have a newcomer practice early in the morning to get two quarterbacks reps early in the morning and then have a, um, a veteran practice in the afternoon. Now, we're only going to do that for three days, but we do believe we can get quarterbacks indoctrinated to the new installation and give them some reps. We're going to rotate how we play our quarterbacks in practice. We may have two seven-on-sevens. We won't have two teams. We'll have two seven-on-sevens to give them the amount of reps that they can. Go to the camera platform over here to the right. Hey, Coach, when we talked to Dave down in New Orleans, he, one of the guys asked him if, if, if he ever yells to get his <laughs> message across, and he said he doesn't. He said he found a different way to communicate. You sound like you might have yelled a day or two in your life, but yeah. uh, what do you think of his style of coaching? Why is it so effective? I think everybody has their own style. And obviously, you have to coach who you are. Dave is one of the smartest football coaches I've ever been around. Uh, Dave can look at a play and knows what every all 22 players are doing like that. Some coaches are like that, some coaches are not. Uh, Dave studies the game 24-7. Dave is a, a very technical football coach. But he doesn't believe in being loud and doesn't believe in speaking a lot of words. But when he does speak, it's in specifics. Uh, Dave is, is uh, big on running through the football. He's big on tackling and fundamentals. But he's just not a big yeller. Uh, that's not who he is. So I respect that. And I think he's darn good at what he does. Go down here to the front row on the left side. Ed, given what you said about uh, recruiting Louisiana and how the SEC landscape changed recently with, with Jimbo coming in, how important was it for you all to, to get Terrence Marshall to sign uh, given the competition for him late? Oh, it was important, and uh, they made a run. Well, Jimbo's an outstanding recruiter. They made a run. and uh, But, you know, when you recruit the state of Louisiana, we've been recruiting a lot of these young men for two years, and you build relationships, and you build a solid foundation. So if you're doing the proper job and you build a solid foundation, it should be very tough for someone to come in at the end to steal someone from LSU. Most of the young men growing up in the state of Louisiana grew up wanting to play at LSU one time or another. It's our job to rekindle that feeling and to get them to Tiger Stadium. Go over here to the right side, middle of the second row. Hey, Coach, uh, Bruce Marshall, Sports Byline USA. I'm an old, uh, old-time Redskins fan. A little surprised Darius Geis fell down to us in the second round. Can you tell me what might have been going on there and what are we getting with him? You're getting a tremendous football player and a tremendous young man. Uh, I don't know what went on, but I think that the Redskin is a perfect place for Darius. He is a player that runs the football with violence. He plays the position, the running back position, like Warren Sapp played the defensive tackle position. And that's the first time I've had a running back do that. A tremendous young man, tremendous player, third down back. I can do all you want to do. He's going to do a tremendous job for the Redskins. Y'all going to be proud of him. Go to the camera platform back here on the left side. Coach, uh, here, <clears throat> Coach here in the back. Um, you've already lauded some praise on Devin White. But what are some of the intangibles that he has that makes him such a valuable asset on yeah. the field but also representing the program as a whole? You know, I think Devin uh, spends a lot of time on leadership, a lot of times on silently coaching younger players, not to make it a big me deal. Being a leader by doing things the right way, he spends a lot of time with Dave. I know there's a lot of text messages between him and Dave, a lot of communication on leadership. He's the first one to come ask me, Coach, what can I do better? Coach, I want you to coach me harder. I know you've been through some great teams. Show me how to do it. So he's always asking for advice, always wanting constructive criticism, and that's a leader. We'll stay back here on the left side of the camera platform. I want to ask you about a guy who's here in Atlanta now. I think you had Deion Jones for one year. I know it's a different position group, but what do you make of his progress so far in the NFL? We're proud of him. Uh, Debo's an excellent young man. He's an excellent Tiger, obviously very fast. He's physical, can key and diagnose. The thing you get about Debo is the same guy every day. I do not think that in any way or form that fame is going to get to him. I think he's going to continue to work every day and remain hungry. As he would tell you, there's still some things he needs to get better at. But the thing that most impressed me with him was his speed and his physicality. Go all the way to the back right of the camera platform. With all the good things you said about Devin White, what are the chances he gets number 18 in the fall? You know, we haven't made that decision yet. 
on uh, who's going to get the number 18, but obviously he would be a candidate. We'll go right over here at the back row, right in the middle. Uh, Coach Devin White joked about Foster Moore, who's so intelligent, he uses vocabulary words and stuff that goes everyone, <laughs> over everyone's head. But j just what kind of player is he? He seems like he brings some toughness, a little, you know, uh, Foster to your team. You know, I would say, and I don't know if you me how to measure this, but Foster is definitely one of the tougher players on our football team. I was there the night that uh, we decided to offer a, schol a scholarship to Foster. It was one of the last nights. I believe he almost went to Tulane. And thank God that we did offer him a scholarship. Uh, he brings so many things to the table. Obviously, he's a great blocker, can stretch the field, can catch. He's good in protection, but he does so much more as a worker. You can go to where there's a 7 o'clock work group. Foster's working out with the 7 o'clock work group. There's an 11 o'clock work group. Foster's there, and there's a 2 o'clock. Now, he may not be working out at all three groups, but he's going to attend and coach and support as a teammates. What you see is what you get every day with Foster. All right, last question for Coach. We'll go right here to the left side in the middle. Yeah, with the expansion of legalized sports betting, do you think anything needs to be done to address injury reports? You know, uh, as I said in there, obviously I've been in NFL, the NFL one year. There's a standard way in which you report injuries. Uh, I don't know if that's ever going to come to college football. Uh, that is outside my wheelhouse. Uh, if I'm required to do it, I will. If not, I'll keep on doing what we've been doing. Thanks, Coach. Thank you.